Hello, saints. This is Zebulon, where truth lives. Today's topic, am I converted? To say amen, just hit that like button. To join Zebulon, smash that subscribe button. To be notified when Zebulon puts out new content, just hit that bell. Comment on this video. Share this video with friends. Share this video with family. Share this video with your enemies. Let's do this. Am I converted? First, let me say that you're part of Zebulun. We're all part of the family of God. Let us know your prayer requests in the comment section below, and my wife and I will pray for you. And please pray for us. The devil's angry because he knows we're teaching people about how to walk with more closely with God. We are truth seekers here, going wherever truth, as revealed in the Bible, may lead us. Each session will build on the previous ones as we climb Jacob's ladder. But in order to climb a ladder, you must begin on the first rung, or you're not going anywhere. And the first rung in our walk with God is conversion. Many people struggle with their walk because they were never converted. In order to be born again, you first have to die, die of self. Let me tell you a little bit of my story. Having grown up an atheist, we didn't go to church when I grew up. In college, I championed evolution. I debated against Christians, mocking scriptural accounts. But life has a way of humbling the arrogant, and after drinking my way through my 20s, I found I was powerless to quit. At this point, I had had some exposure to the Bible through my ex-wife. When we broke up, I treated the Bible like communal property, and it stayed with her. Yet unknown to me, my exposure to the Word of God had changed me. It changed me from an atheist to an agnostic from someone who didn't believe that God existed to someone who wondered, is it possible maybe that God does exist? And something else happened. As I went back to my old ways of drinking and partying, I experienced this tremendous guilt afterwards to the extent that it was no longer worth it. I couldn't live like this, yet I was powerless to do anything about it. I wanted to live right, but found myself powerless to make it happen. I felt like I was on a spiritual yo-yo. Paul describes this step of conversion in Romans 7, 19 and 24. Let's turn there in our Bibles to Romans 7, 19. And before we read, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together and consider your word. I pray that you will bless it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 719, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. <laughs> God knows human nature. You want to do good, but you keep doing bad. And in verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? Well, I'll tell you who can deliver you. It's Christ, through the power of his Holy Spirit. I remember like it was yesterday. I was sitting on my mother's couch one Saturday morning. And an inaudible voice spoke to my soul saying, get up and go to church. I obeyed. And the pastor that morning preached a sermon titled Decisions. At the appeal, at the end of his message, I stood up and accepted Christ. And as I walked down the aisle, I could feel Satan's hand releasing from my shoulders. 
as, team, as tears streamed down my face. I accepted Christ that morning, and the rest is history. My point is that we must do four things. Number one, we must come to a point where we believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can read about that in Hebrews 11, verse 6. Do you understand that, my friend? That there is a God in heaven who created you and me when you look in the mirror and you see your face? That this is not some evolutionary byproduct, but the result of a loving, creative God who made you, made your eyes, your nose, your mouth, gave you a brain for self-reflection. And then once you understand that God exists, you need to, we need to respond appropriately. We look into his word and we see his law. And we compare our lives with the law of God and we see that we come woefully short. For the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We realize our fallen state, that we are hopeless sinners, that our righteousness is filthy rags in his, compared to his righteousness and holiness. And we see how holy God is and we're undone. Have you done that, my friend? If not, why don't you do it today? And then number three, having recognized our sinfulness and desiring righteousness, by faith we die of sin, the sin that's in us. We die with Christ who was crucified and we're resurrected to newness of life just as he was resurrected, born again of the Spirit. And we surrender our life to God, trusting him to direct our path. In order to be born again, you must die first. Have you surrendered your life to him? Have you died of self daily? Don't forget that daily part. We must die daily, every morning. We need to crucify self and ask God to direct our steps. And then finally, we need to maintain our daily walk through prayer and Bible study. How's your morning devotions going? Do you get up every morning and the first thing you do, do you get on your knees or do you go to prayer, go to God in prayer and talk to him, share your heart, die of self, ask him to lead you, and then spend some time in his word to lay a foundation for your day and then stay in communication with him throughout the day? This is walking with God. It's not complicated. It's very simple. We confess our sins. We accept Christ and his blood that washes our sins. And then we read his Bible and we pray every day. And we let our light shine in this world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together in Zebulon, our new website. Well, not a website, our new YouTube page, Father God. And Valerie and I, we just pray that you will bless each person out there that's listening. We pray, Father God, that they will know that there's a God in heaven who created the heavens and the earth, and he's worthy of our worship. We pray that they will come to understand that we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. And as we compare our righteousness to his, ours is filthy rags. But we're not hopeless because he came on this, into this world and he died on our behalf. Help us to receive Christ each morning and allow him to direct our lives. If there's anyone who has never accepted Christ, we pray right now that they would receive Christ and his Holy Spirit and be born again of the Spirit and that they will maintain this new birth experience through daily prayer and Bible study and learn to read and understand your scriptures and walk with God and have that peace as we await the second coming of our Lord and Savior. We're living in the last days. There's a lot of darkness in the land. We need to be sharing this, these truths with everyone we can. And we pray that you, I pray that you would be each, with each family that's listening. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, well, until next time, 
God bless and keep looking up. Bye-bye.